Wow, another day, another Saturday, another Saturday, another Saturday. Uh, what now is for me is good morning, good morning. Uh, for other people, probably bonus dias. Uh, for other people, probably um, bonus noche. Uh, for other people, probably maganda umaga. Ou bien bon dia. Bonjour. Thank you uh, so much, everybody. As usually, we, uh, we always make sure uh, when we have a little time, we try to put another video, video, and uh, to make sure everybody understand what's going on in the world. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna go to every everything in the world. We're gonna go to Mr. Former President Donald Trump. And like I say every day, every day, day by day, how much can he take? How much can he take? Why he want to run for president again? Why? Every day something new, every day something new. So therefore, I'm going to let you listen to what's going on in his life. Today is Saturday. It's November 3rd, right? November, November 4th, I'm sorry. Today is Saturday, November 4th. So what now is like uh, pretty much to me is like uh, so I'm gonna let the video play so you guys hear what's going on in the wall, guy. It is uh, a sad, uh, sad uh, 2023. It's not an easy day for nobody. It's like uh, problem after problem is all over the world. It's not like it's happened on one place. It's happening all over the world, from Africa to Russia, Ukraine, Japan, Taiwan, Philippines, and uh, South Africa, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Haiti, Santo Domingo, Republic, and New York City, United States. It's all over the world. Israel, Palestine, Hamas, Iran, everywhere, Iraq, everywhere in the world, guys. And uh, I always believe the best thing for us to do, those of you who pray and continue and pray, because uh, thing is not that easy. It's all over the world. Uh, let's continue to pray and see God. Only God have the power to change everything in the world, guys. Only God has the power. To do so so therefore i'm gonna let you listen to the um, therefore i'm gonna let you listen sorry guys um, therefore i'm gonna let you listen to the video and see what's going on in president donald show live today again saturday 20 Thursday, 23 to this fourth of, of november Thank you guys don't forget to subscribe like and share guy one one problem to all my friends and supporters so you guys watching the video a lot of you guys watch the video but you guys don't do no thumbs up why guy like the video you don't you don't like the video because because you like the video you like the video because you support me and i'm doing the same thing i support you also so that's the reason why you have to like the video please go ahead guy and like the video i'm gonna let you listen we're gonna go all over the world and let you listen to what's going on in the world thank you so much guy let's go and see what happened we have breaking news today pertaining to the gag order imposed on donald trump by judge tanya chutkin the dc federal criminal trial that she's presiding over regarding Trump's efforts to undermine the 2020 election. Now, a three-judge panel will hear oral arguments on this gag order in a couple of weeks, but in the meantime, the appeals court issued a temporary stay on that gag order until the court can rule on its merits. And that means that, at least for now, Trump is no longer barred from publicly targeting court personnel or potential witnesses or prosecutors. Trump's team has signaled that it is very eager to continue litigating this, suggesting late last night. I know you guys listen to it. I mean, I'm not going. I'm going. I'm not going to stop the video, and so let you listen to it. I believe Donald Trump. He have a lot of money. He have a lot of money. He been a president, and why? Why he had to go through all this thing on his life? Why he had to 
be all this thing every day it's a good order every day is this is this is this is this and then to me i feel like it's too much maybe for him it's not too much but why he got money and i think he about 70 something and he got money and then um he can you know i mean you've been president of one already and i pretty much feel like um uh to me it's you accomplish what you need to accomplish and uh and I, I don't know if it's if it's correct if we drop the president rest, is that going to stop them to uh, to still prosecute him or not? I'm not sure. But if I was him, I would not. I would say enough is enough. I would not go anywhere. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, all my fans. And I would say bye bye to it, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Pas oublier, abonnez à la vidéo, partagez les et share avec tout le monde. Nous allons parler de tout ce qui est passé dans le monde actuel. Là. Dans tout le monde, là, on a parlé de ce qui est passé. Et nous avons dit ça comme président Donald Trump. Et nous avons nous besoin de connaître pourquoi le président Donald Trump, pourquoi il veut être le président. Et il a toujours persécuté, il a fait des comptes, il a fait des invités. Pourquoi il a besoin d'aller pour le président. Parce que si vous avez bataille pour un bagage, ou pas, ou vous avez un bagage à l'aide, ou c'est une vie ou la bataille pour qu'il soit bataille pour lui. Et comme nous disons déjà, gars, ces mondes-là, mondes-là bouleversés, les mondes bouleversés, les mondes qui ont problème. The world is is in bouleverse. The world is upside down. It's everywhere on the world is a problem, problem after problem. So therefore, what Pabi est partagé vidéo, like vidéo, et continue de share vidéo pour moi. Les nous garder vidéo à fort, nous partager. Ma bande tout ça qui passe dans maintenant depuis Haïti jusqu'à Africa, non en tout. To preserve the status quo while uh, a case is pending before it comes before them and so sometimes that's referred to as an administrative stay and i guess they see the status quo as the absence of a gag order and so they will examine the order and decide whether it needs to be overturned or modified in some way um, but i do agree with your point about not just protecting the fair administration of justice but protecting the safety of some of the individuals involved you know there's this phrase called stochastic terrorism and it means we don't know exactly who or when uh exactly it'll be you know maybe random but when you make these kinds of reckless statements about people there's a good chance that someone who is unhinged out there will take it as an invitation to do violence against someone. For example, when Donald Trump talked about the Mar-a-Lago search by the FBI and even accused the FBI of planting evidence, uh, within a day or two, a man in Ohio heard that as a call to action, went and tried to breach the FBI's office in Cincinnati with an assault rifle. That man ended up dead in a standoff. And so, you know, Caesar Syak, the pipe bomber, there are enough examples of this that someone can take the bait that this is a very real threat, not a theoretical one. Yeah, I, and then there's also this sort of practical... Okay, guys, do, do we need this? We don't need this. We don't need this. People life should be should be something very important in everybody. God create us, not anybody. Why should anybody take somebody's life? And uh, that's what I just said about the former president. Why would he wanna keep talking and they keep bothering him, they keep doing this to him? Why don't he stop it? Why he have to fight with it? Why is why is why? That's the question we wanna ask. And then why we need war, war, war all over the world. We don't need that. We need peace, peace, peace all over the world. We should love each other, we should care about each other, we should make sure we all thank people. It's meant something to other people's life, guys. That's all is about that. It's not about fight, fight, argue, argue every day. So it doesn't make no sense for a former president and then every time he open his mouth and says something it's go against him every time he says something it's go against him and you got all you guys see it let's watch it and listen to it about five weeks in between the two trials so it seems like things would be just fine but one of the points they made is that they are sort of playing these two judges against each other and ask the judges not to be manipulated by Trump and his team by you know they're saying that they're asking for an extension in one because they can't be in two places at the same time and yet they're asking for an extension in that case as well well which is it one of these trials ought to go in the spring um, and so I think that's something to, to keep an eye on of course the the best strategy for Donald Trump at all is to delay these cases until after the election in hopes that he wins and that he can dispose of them once he's in office. We have a lot 
to look forward to. Barbara McQuaid, thank you again for your time and expertise. Good to see you. Thank you, Alex. So that means um, the way I see it here is like um, the way I see it is like um, attention business owners. If you so this is the former president. His son is called Eric Shop, and I think he had to go to court and testify testify again again. And then uh, I'm going to let you listen to what he had to say about his dad or about uh, the law of this country. And um, it's not, if I don't say it, it's not you say it. But the people on the country who born here, it's the country, it's the country, that's what they say. And we go, I'm going to let you listen to it and what he had to say. And so I'm going to be running the type. I'm going to return it all the way to the end so you can listen to what he said. This is the former president's son. You gonna come in out. legislation during reconstruction and they do so today we have one case on our that guy listen this is very important and everybody spared that uh, do you believe the former president Donald Trump they will remove him from the ballot for 2024 and that's a question everybody been asking well, I need to know and you need to know. Therefore, I found it. I found it for you and I bring it to you. So, are they going to remove the former president, Donald Trump, 
from the ballot for 2020 24 election for president we don't know let's listen to it carefully just listen to it guys pay attention to it everybody need to know what's going on what they're going to do our oral calendar this morning joan grow at all versus steve simon minnesota secretary of state uh, the record should reflect that Justice Margaret Chudich and Justice Carl Procaccini are both recused from this matter and will take no part in the consideration or decision of this case. Um, as a procedural matter this morning, um, counsel, you will each have three minutes of uninterrupted time for any opening comments that you would care to make. At the end of the three minutes, I will stop you to see if the court has any questions. Just so that we're kind of all on the same page in terms of the order of speakers, we're going to hear first from Mr. Fine representing the petitioners. Mr. Fine, I understand you've reserved 10 minutes for rebuttal. We're... Thank you. Following Mr. Fine, we'll hear from Mr. Harshorn representing the Sec Secretary of State, Steve Simon. Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> followed, uh, you will be followed by Mr. Nelson for Donald J. Trump and Donald J. Trump for President 2024. And finally, we'll hear from Mr. LeBeau for the Republican Party of Minnesota. Thank you. Great. With that, Mr. Fine, um, if you're ready to proceed, you may do so. May it please the court and counsel, I'm Ronald Fine for petitioners. And with me, our co-counsel from Free Speech for People and Lockridge Grindle Mallon. Your honors, this is a case of extraordinary importance. Petitioners ask this court to uphold the US Constitution and defend American democracy. Beginning before the 2020 election and culminating on January 6th, 2021, Donald Trump engaged in rebellion and insurrection against the Constitution of the United States in a desperate attempt to remain in office after losing the election. Section three of the 14th Amendment protects the Republic from oath-breaking insurrectionists because its framers understood that if they are allowed back into power, they will do the same or worse. Section three's plain text bars Trump from ever holding office. And this court, as directed by the Minnesota legislature in section 204B.44, must exclude Trump from the ballot. I have three main points. First, section three is a direct prohibition on office holding. It grants Congress power to remove disqualification, but forced it without such legislation during reconstruction, and they do so today. The fact that section five of the 14th amendment grants Congress power to enact additional legislation does not strip this court of its duty to interpret and enforce the Constitution. Second, Minnesota Statute 204B44 directs this court to decide petitions involving placement of ineligible candidates. It specifically includes federal candidates and nothing in 204B44 or Chapter 207A immunizes presidential candidates from challenge. Nothing in the federal 12th or 20th Amendments or Electoral Count Act gives Congress the exclusive power to resolve questions of presidential qualifications, nor removes Minnesota's authority to protect the integrity of its elections by regulating ballot access. And third, under Section 3, the President is an officer of the United States. No party has disputed that the presidency is an office under the United States. Yet Trump claims that he was not an officer which would make it an officerless office. And he claims that his oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution was not an oath to support the Constitution. These arguments make a mockery of Section 3 and the constitutional democracy that it was enacted to preserve. For these reasons, we respectfully ask the court to schedule a prompt evidentiary hearing. I'll start with Section 3. Section 3... Council, actually, let me stop you there before you go to Section 3. Um, as I understand your 
your principal argument. It's that your, your clients have a cause of action under Minnesota Statute 204B44A1. Uh, because that's what allows for the correction of an error that has occurred or is about to occur, uh, including the placement of a candidate um, on a ballot who is not eligible to hold that office. And then it seems to me you kind of dovetail to saying that, well, Mr. Trump is un ineligible to hold office because of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And therefore, this court should order the Secretary of State to, to keep his name off the ballot. What, what I'm concerned about, though, let's say you're right. Let's say we agree with you that Section 3 is self-executing and that we do have the authority under the, the relevant statute to, to keep Mr. Trump's name off the ballot. Should we is the question that, that concerns me the most. And I'm getting at some of the political question, just disability issues uh, that respondents have raised. Um, because it, it does seem to me that you run square into the problem that Chief Justice Chase talked about in Griffin, where you have the potentiality of 50 different states um, who, depending on the, the nature of the statutes in those states, uh, deciding... Guy, right, listen, I told you that. This is a very important question. But this is not the whole United States. This is Minnesota. That's the one state, Minnesota. So, Minnesota, they try to make sure that he off the ballot. Don't put his name in it. And then if you got listen to it, you're talking about January 6th and 2020 election. So, that is very important, guy. I bring that to you live from Gene St. Martin YouTube. Like and share and subscribe. Listen to it, guys. Very important. Reaching different decisions is actually the way that our constitutional system is set up. For better or worse, we have an electoral college, not a single national election. We have 51 different elections. As a practical matter, Your Honor, if this court uh, were to uh, rule that Trump is disqualified from the primary ballot, I anticipate that he would seek review in the U.S. Supreme Court, which could provide a final answer to the question. And so uh, it, it would actually be unlikely that there would be 51 different decisions. But that type of argument uh, regarding the, the patchwork of decisions was addressed by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in Lindsay versus Bowen, uh, which basically said uh, that this is the way our system is, is set up for better or worse. And uh, Professor Muller's amicus brief uh, gives ample examples of, uh, of courts around the country and different states adjudicating presidential candidates. But you would agree. But that, that's, that, that's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear the whole detail of everything. So they fight Minnesota to keep him off the ballot. So they he they say they take it off for primary, not for general election for primary. So let's see. Let's move on to something different. We don't have to listen to all this. That don't that's I don't see why we listen to all this. Let's go to the next one, guy. Thank you so much. Guy, I bring this to you again. I want you to pay attention to it. This is the first former ladies Hillary Clinton and try to do a town hall meeting and then there's a lot of questions coming out I think she's a teacher or professor of school and we say IGP Institute of Global Politics so let's listen to what happened to her and what this guy say guy it is sad uh thank getting complicated thank you so much guy. let's listen i'm sorry you, you have a the, well the, i'm not sorry the, the, you sit down i, I know you're not sorry but by the hypocrisy of the two more people I, I they hear from i'm sorry you, you have a chance well the, i'm not sorry the, the sit down I, I know you're not sorry that's people. the point the We're hypocrisy of this talk. speech the I'm hypocrisy of the fact that Frank what what Gisha, do you have can Frank you please Gisha can you, is can you please make a statement about president joe biden's speech this is a clearly is warmongering speech president joe biden is calling for a hundred billion dollars of funding for israel taiwan and ukraine and we're supposed to just bundle these together and pretend like we're going to rush to world war three and we're all just going to let hillary rodham clinton sit here and, okay I'm yes sorry. 
you know, yes. this is not, what, what, this is not no, the way no, to have no, a conversation. No, I'm sorry. If you want to have a conversation, you're no, welcome to come you, talk to you me can, afterwards. You can sit here. Okay, you're right. You're yeah. gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna wait for me, right? I, please, I, I, I don't, I you, do not believe and I you. I listen to you. And <laughs> I do I respond. I do to not you. believe you. But Respectfully, right. I do not believe you. Well, and the fact of the matter wow. is that the yes. American people's voice are what need to be heard. Yeah, because they are being because heard. our president is not speaking for the American people, and well, neither are that's you. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. Yes, that's my but, opinion. But well, then sit down. We've heard your opinion. Thank you very sure. much. Now we're gonna. I'm not gonna sit down. I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop working. I'm gonna wait here. Right. I'm going to exercise my free speech. But is that wow. free speech when you this, are disrupting yes, everybody it is. else's opportunity? It is free speech. Sure. This is free speech, everyone. This is free speech. That is not free speech. Oh, Lord. This is people She's in trouble. constructing narratives that are openly hypocritical. I'm sorry. You, the, the incredible hypocrisy. You, you know, tell me John actually... Foster Dulles went with Eleanor Roosevelt to bring this Declaration of the Rights of Man? John Foster Dulles was involved with the CIA. Oh yeah, well you're brilliant in your oh, historical yes. Th yes, thank uh, you. And the Pinochet, the Pinochet regime. Oh, please, listen. could you please inform me about the United States okay, involved we are in these going historical to, things? We're going to move on. Miss Clinton, will you denounce Joe Biden? Will you denounce Joe Biden? Will you yelling about it? Down right so now. Frank, I want to turn to you because. You are from Uganda, and what, what I want to do is what I want to do is homosexuality and homosexuality and criminalizing LGBT conduct in Uganda. He's trying to push us to World War III. Do you understand? It's not about Israel and Palestine. It's not about. It's not football. This isn't football. It's not Team America. Well, I'm sorry, but. Some of us are on Team America, despite our flaws and our Yes, problems. yes, that, that's me. And some of us... You can't take over the event. You have to stop right now. You have to stop. Or what? I'm going to exercise my every person on this stage your has wished for a life to be lived in a Their income, their reputation, their careers, and what have you done other than... to denounce the president's openly warmongering, suicidal, idiotic speech. And I that's what I've done. That's what I've done. done. So that's the end of I, our conversation. Okay, but sir. I'll still meet you I outside. Need to but you're done. Right now. Okay. Okay. Frank, okay. Frank. Subscribe to One India Channel. A beautiful place. Well, thank you very much, and a very big hello to a place where we've done very well, Sioux Falls. Thank you very much, Sioux Falls. And Thank you also to this incredible, incredible state. It's been very good for us, and we have some uh, truly great Americans with us, as you know, and one of the greatest is Dr. Ben Carson. He's been my friend, and Candy. Candy is incredible. I think Candy keeps him there, Greg. You, help, you helped him so much. I think without Candy, he'd be nothing, okay? You want to know that, too. He'd be nothing like all of us, right? Candy, thank you very much, and uh, what a great relationship. And what a great man you are, Ben. Thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. <laughs> Additionally, on this Sunday afternoon, I'm delighted to announce the endorsements. And these are very important to me because I have such respect for people that do this. They are the most respected people of more than 100 great Iowa faith leaders. So I want to thank you and you're in the room and I just want to give you applause because you, the job you do is incredible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a great honor. I won't disappoint you. And thank you for all of your tremendous support. Very special thanks to senior pastor Bill Clay's allies following its failed counteroffensive two years into the war. Cor
new in-depth profile reveals massive corruption inside Ukraine. That's according to Time magazine, which writes on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. A top Ukrainian presidential advisor has apparently warned that, quote, people are stealing like there's no tomorrow. When asked about bribery and corruption amidst Ukraine's pressure to root out corruption, while it struggles to rally financial support from Western allies following its failed counteroffensive. Two years into the war, according to the article, 59% of Americans do not want Congress to provide more weapons to Ukraine, up from 35% in June. The profile details alleged scandals in Zelensky's circle and says that the president has given strict orders for his staff to, quote, avoid the slightest perception of self-enrichment. Don't buy anything. Don't take vacations. Just hit your desk. Be quiet and work, according to one staffer. The profile also says that Zelensky feels betrayed by his Western allies and that they have left him without the means to win the war, only the means to survive it, according to a longtime member of his team. Another close aide said Zelensky, quote, deludes himself, we're out of options, we're not winning, but try telling him that. I think that quote really points out, Robbie, that you have kind of a delusional leader that was told, you know, you have the support of the West, you're going to win this war, we won't let Russia win. And he still believes that. And he's really leading his population in, in Ukraine in a war that potentially is unwinnable. They've got a shortage of munitions, but a greater shortage of soldiers. Each side of the war has lost over 100,000 people. That's very significant. And Russia still controls the Russian-speaking population in southern Ukraine. I think really, it, it's sad, but it seems time, as I said earlier in the show, to draw lines in the sand, to figure out a way forward that is peaceful, uh, that makes Russia and Ukraine happy, a way that would lift the sanctions and you know, end U.S. aid going to Ukraine which is very unpopular among the American people and unpopular in our opinion as well, Robbie. Yeah, I mean, what is what is being fought for here? Um, yeah. Zelensky makes it sound like it's an existential battle for the country entirely to remain independent, you know, to stop um, Russia conquering Europe. Um, I mean, if that's what was going on, maybe then our European allies could, <laughs> could, uh, could be bothered could be roused to contribute to the defense of this nation. Of course, they couldn't. Substantially, it is the U.S. that's been um, supplying Zelensky with uh, with support, with weapons. Um, but they're not, I mean, Russia, frankly, is not, it would be a different story if this were the case, but it's not. Russia's not trying to take over the whole country. It, it has concerns about regions on its border where there are a lot of Russian-speaking people and there is a lot of um, loyalty toward Russia. Really, the question is, ought these people to have some self-determination either to be part of Russia or to be an independent uh, state on the Russian border. Um, I don't understand what is what is liberal or Western or democratic about saying, no, this, this border could not possibly change directions at all. That could never happen. Of course, we've redrawn. We've part, The U.S. has participated in the redrawing of Europe how many times? Uh, th like this, this is just something that happens. So it doesn't seem worth um, um, the, the thousands and thousands of lives lost, the substantial distraction from a U.S. standpoint, sending all these, re these resources here for what? To overcome the Russian army to defeat, to, to overthrow Vladimir Putin, that's not going to happen. That's a fantasy, a fantasy of Joe Biden's because he's repeatedly said Ukraine's going to get whatever it wants for as long as it wants in order to, to defeat Vladimir Putin. And in fact, members of, of the Biden administration, spokespeople have suggested that the goal is the the fall of Vladimir Putin, uh, an effort that would, I mean, that's, that's fanciful. I mean, maybe there was some chance at some point of that there's some being some kind of uprising in uh, in Russia it didn't didn't work out. Of course, we saw the uh, the uh, the anti uh, Vladimir Putin um, mercenary force um, try to do that. And what happened? Their leader got blown up in a plane. So let's be you know let's be clear eyed about what we're doing in this country. And 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 the corruption. I think it's just important to point out because so many um, hawkish neocon people um, who are uh, would have formerly been in the Republican Party but now are substantially in the Democratic Party. As we pointed out, the Republican Party has had enough of funding for Ukraine. Um, the vast majority of Democratic leaders support it. Um, they'll say that this is important because Ukraine is this is like this key backstop against tyranny. 
But, okay, but Ukraine, Zelensky has suspended opposition political parties, suspended um, hostile independent media, um, and, and the, the government is, is incredibly, extremely corrupt. And it, it was before this, this war took place. It's, it's uh, the, the, uh, government corruption, collusion with uh, business, bribery is, is a, has been a major problem, in, particularly in Eastern Europe, for a very long time. So what, what are yeah. we doing? Why? Why are we still doing this? That's the right question, Ravi. I don't think anyone has an answer to that question because people don't like asking that question. The neocon terrorists have not picked up by terrorists. How does this help U.S. security? Why won't our leaders think about what's best for U.S. national security? It's only their it's only their main job. It's only their most important job. But it's it's I mean, this is the kind of America last philosophy that so um, ha that ha annoyed conservatives enough to embolden someone like Donald Trump, who spoke out against it and uh, and 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 are pre prepared to do exactly that yet again for the same reason. So yeah. we will. Let's think about the country we're protecting as well. Ukraine yeah. today is not the same Ukraine we decided to support initially. The Ukraine today that we have is not a country with a population that wants to be Europe, a part of Europe. It's not a country that wants to be a part of NATO. It's a country, as the the profile reflected, uh, that is is riddled with corruption. A top presidential advisor said that people are stealing like there's no tomorrow. And that's really the state of people in Ukraine. They don't see a tomorrow for their country. They don't see an end to this war. And so what's going to happen if we let this continue to go on? We continue to let the population of Ukraine grow these anti-Western sentiments. We continue to let the population of Ukraine die in a war with a no foreseeable end because the United States supports it. We're really sowing anti-American sentiments, I'm sure, among the youth population there. Think about the shakeups, not just corruption-wise under the Zelensky administration, but also with personnel that were formerly in the Azov Battalion that were then elevated to positions of leadership and then the firings of people and the corruption. What is the state of mm. Ukraine internally? And is that a country that if we push it to continue to be in this war, is in a good shape to be a sovereign functioning nation once the war ends? I think we really need to make that cal calculation as well for the site. I'll tell you why it's not that simple. Also, the West is waking up to the dangers, dangers of TikTok. The social media platform is full of pro-Hamas propaganda. In the Maldives, a major debt crisis looms, but its new president wants to focus on his India Out campaign. In Bangladesh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina blasted Washington for its lectures. And in India's capital, New Delhi, breathing the air right now is equal to smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. All this and more lined up. Let's get started. The Hezbollah. How do you even define them? A political party slash militia slash Iranian proxy. And right now, Israel's biggest threat. The Hezbollah claim to have more than 100,000 fighters, well-trained, battle-hardened, and ready to fight. They're not like the Hamas or Islamic Jihad. The Hezbollah are a whole different ballgame. In the last few weeks, they have launched multiple attacks on Israel, dozens of rocket strikes, precision missiles, and artillery shelling. Israel has also been hitting back. Hezbollah says around 66 of their fighters have died. On the other side, the IDF has lost eight men. Today, these attacks increased. The Hezbollah struck 19 locations along the border with Israel. And there was a reason for it. The Hezbollah chief made a speech today, his first speech since the Israel-Hamas war. Now, the Hezbollah is led by this man, Hassan Nasrallah. Many of his aides have given statements on this war, but he was silent throughout. Today, he broke that silence. The build-up was long, but his speech was longer, around one and a half hours of threats, warnings, and rhetoric. Nasrallah said the October 7th attack was 100% Palestinian, meaning the Hezbollah did not know about it. He praised the Hamas terrorists who carried out this attack, but he also answered the most pressing question. Will the Hezbollah jo join this war? Well, Nasrallah had an interesting answer. He says the Hezbollah has already joined the war. They did it on the 8th of October. Listen to this. Regarding our Lebanese front, as some were saying, His Eminence is going to announce joining the battle. We entered the battle on October 8th. What's happening in Gaza today is not like any other previous war. 
It's unlike anything that has happened before. It's not just another battle, it's a decisive and historic one. What unfolds after it will differ significantly from what it was before. And what does that mean? It means the status quo is likely to remain. Limited Hezbollah attacks and strikes, but no full-scale war. Now, for the moment, that seems to be Nasrallah's position. Having said that, it could change in the blink of... Yes, because I'm sure... Look, when I ran, I said, the world's at an inflection point. The world's changing, but we have an opportunity to make it. So imagine if we were able to succeed in getting the Middle East put in place where we have normalization of relations. I think we can do that. Imagine what happens if, in fact, unite all of Europe and Putin is finally put down where he cannot cause the kind of trouble he's been causing. We have enormous opportunities, enormous opportunities to make it a better world. Mr. President, given these two wars and the dysfunction in Congress, are you sure that you want to run again? Yes, because I'm sure. Look, when I ran, I said the world's at an inflection point. The world's changing. We have an opportunity to make it. So imagine if we were able to succeed in getting the Middle East put in place where we have normalization of relations. I think we can do that. Imagine what happens if, in fact, unite all of Europe and Putin is finally put down where he cannot cause the kind of trouble he's been causing. We have enormous opportunities. An explosive turn in Trump's civil trial three days before he takes the stand. The judge issued a new supplemental limited gag order over new remarks about his. Federal appeals court has temporarily freed Trump to head gag order in the D.C. election fraud case. And Jack Smith tells the D.C. court he opposes a push by media outlets, including NBC Universal, to have cameras in federal court for Trump's trial. Trump will testify Monday in the New York State civil fraud trial against his company. His daughter Ivanka will testify there on Wednesday. Also new today, an explosive turn in Trump's civil trial three days before he takes the stand. The judge issued a new supplemental limit. Gag order. But is living under Kagame's government an African utopia? And as his influence in the region expands, a lot. He's one of the most influential names in African politics. Paul Kagame has ruled the small landlocked country of Rwanda for 23 years. The nation of 13 million has come a long way since the civil war and genocide in 1994. Rwanda's significant progress in education, technology, healthcare, and security has made the nation an African success story. But is living under Kagame's government an African utopia? And as his influence in the region expands, along with the country's geopolitical role, is Rwanda proving to be a disruptive force in the region? Some of the questions we put forward that the president of Rwanda, as Paul Kagame, talks to Al Jazeera. Paul Kagame, president of Rwanda, thanks so much for talking to Al Jazeera. You're welcome. You've been president of Rwanda for 23 years now, and the constitution has been changed, so you can be in place for another 10 years. As history has shown us that, that individuals who are often in leadership for that long a period of time, sometimes it doesn't end well. How do you see the story of Rwanda proceeding after your leadership? Well, first of all, it's not just the individual that is being elected or that is there for those years. It's also a question of those who enable that person to be there for all that time. So it's an interaction of choices to make by various sections of our population. So also, of course... I can't even see them. There are so many people a beautiful place well thank you very much and a very big hello to a place where we've done very well Sioux Falls thank you very much Sioux Falls and thank you also to this incredible incredible state it's been very good for us and we have some uh, truly great 
Americans with us as you know. We've made in the supplemental for the national security. We, we want to see both move forward because it is vital, vital as those two countries are fighting, fighting for their democracies. That, I, I, look, these are emergency funding requests, right? We've been very clear about that. Like other emergency funding, uh, funding that Congress has passed with bipartisan support, they do not require offsets. They just don't. However, some Republicans say they're willing to go nuclear over domestic spending cuts. Representative Chip Roy of Texas told Fox News he'd be willing to let the government shut down over it. Speaker Johnson has a lot of work to do to get appropriations bills done over the next two and a half weeks and to set the table for an actual debate in front of the American people about making sure we take our country back and stop spending money that's driving up inflation, killing our economy, funding all manners of, of world engagements, and continue to leave our border wide open for exploitation by terrorists and all, all manners of dangerous individuals that can harm us. Well, reading between the lines, it sounds like you are a holdout again and that uh, you are quite prepared to shut the government down. You are, aren't you? Yes, well, you are. Uh, let me just say, you are. well, let me say, Stuart, Stuart, the question here is, do you believe that we should continue to fund a United Nations that literally just stood with Hamas? Should we continue to fund a wide open border that is endangering my constituents where people are dying from fentanyl? Should we continue to fund the World Health Organization and all of these leftist organizations and rags that have been undermining our ability to have health care freedom around the world? These are questions that we should be answering and continuing a continuing resolution of a bloated one point seven trillion dollar spending bill that's driving the inflation that you report on every single day dealing with the market conditions and the problem <laughs> 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 Stop supporting the not in the face of russia's aggression against ukraine not in the face of an intensifying strategic competition in the Indo-Pacific and around the world. If the witness will suspend, and I ask that everyone again respect this hearing, we will suspend until the room is clear. Each time a protester was escorted out of the hearing by police, Blinken would then resume his testimony just to be interrupted by another protester. It's helped make sure that Russia's invasion and strategic... Committee will suspend... Joining us now to discuss is someone who was in the room when this all happened, Code Pink co-founder Media Benjamin joins us now. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Nice to be with you. So what is your goal in, and I, you were one of the, the people protesting there, um, what are you hoping to achieve? We wanted to send a strong message to Secretary of State Blinken, uh, Secretary Austin, as well as to the senators and, of course, the American people uh, that while 66% of Americans want to have a ceasefire, uh, that is not something that the Biden administration is calling for and there is not one senator in the entire Senate that is calling for a ceasefire. So we thought it was important to get this message out that we are appalled that the U.S. has given the green light to Israel to bomb relieve to see that there are people in the united states and of course they've seen the many protests that have been happening all around this country organized by jewish groups by muslim groups by uh, all kinds of organizations so i think we just have to increase the pressure on our congress and our administration if we're going to get our voices uh, heard in a more effective way 
You mentioned that not a single senator has supported a ceasefire. A number of senators have uh, advocated for a humanitarian pause, but the word ceasefire seemed to be um, uh, un unsayable among this crew, even among uh, progressives like Bernie Sanders. I do wonder the extent to which Code Pink has reached out to his office and what, if anything, you've heard uh, from his team about why this seems to be a line in the sand for sen senators. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honest with you, I really think it's very sad and uh, what's going on. And like we said before, we don't we don't expect people to be die, people to be lost their life. We expect people life have to mean something to everybody. This is the Secretary of State, uh, uh, Anthony Blinken, and uh, was speak. Uh, uh, I don't know where he was speak, but he was speak somewhere. And I don't know if it's at the Assembly National or if at the Congress or I don't know. And when everybody tried to stop him, he can even speak. They had to say, they had to stop it. And everybody called out for peace. Um, I did talk about ceasefire and everything. God, is it really sad? And when you're watching all these people, it should mean something to everyone in the world, guys. Please don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe the channel and share out and guys make sure everybody got the word everybody everything pass out and everybody know it i know a lot of people probably already watched this already a lot of people already see it already but guys let's watch it guy and then make sure you like share and subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel yet thank you so much everybody hasta la vista all hasta luego see you on another video guys thank you so much everybody thank you guys for watching and we are 51 minutes, so we don't want to go over that, don't make it too long. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe the video. If you're not subscribed to me yet, guys, if you can see uh, some tea coming to my eyes, guys. And when you're watching all this, uh, you're a human being, and it's just really sad uh, for what you see what's going on in the world. But I hope everything is come up to a conclusion after I hope everything become. Uh, one day the Bible says so it's all, enough is enough so the world leader need to come up with something please they need to come up with something try to stop the war no fight no killing no nothing that's so we need peace everybody have to leave for the time God send you on the earth to leave that's so we need we don't want people to go on before they die thank you so much for everybody for watching our friend all over the world please don't forget to subscribe and like the video thank you so much guys see you on another video ciao ciao